Hey, True Believers England Teen here with a review of Goddess Mode. This is the book by Zoe Quinn, and here's the thing. This could be the easiest review I've ever done, because all I would have to do is just tear into it, lay it down that, uh, oh my gosh, this is the most SJW book of all time, this is the worst thing you've ever heard of, and it's g horrible and god-awful, and... Wow, I can't believe the cringe, blah, 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 yada, yada, we get it. Uh, but seriously, this could possibly be the easiest review I've ever done. Since the name Zoe Quinn alone causes everybody to raise the shields and put it up to 10 or whatever, I don't know, Star Trek references. Point being is, just the name Zoe Quinn alone made us all go, okay, it's going to suck. And you know what, I was one of those people when I heard that they were giving her a book. My eyes rolled like a friggin' slot machine. Yes, that's the term I use all the time. But seriously, it does. Like, oh, God, why Zoe Quinn? So, yeah, this book is guilty before the trial. Now that we already know this, now that we already know it's going to suck, let's calm down and actually hear a real review on it. This is one of the hardest books or hardest kind of books I have to review. See, if it was really good, I would be like, oh my gosh, you gotta hear you gotta hear this and I gotta tell you all about it. And I would be excited about it. And I would tell you that this book is great and wonderful and all the ways I, I thought it was great and wonderful, all the while trying not to spoil it for you. So the experience you have is great and wonderful. If it were bad and terrible as all of us expect it to be, I could go, oh my gosh, you won't believe this. And then I would tell you all the ways it was horrible and terrible. It would be really easy. We could crack jokes on it, and it would be like, oh my gosh, yes, I knew it. Taha, confirmation bias is uh, rewarded. Woohoo! And then, you know, we could all kick back, have a drink, and laugh at the fact that Zoe Quinn failed again. Unfortunately, this book is right in the middle. This book is parsley. Seriously, this book is on the plate, looks pretty. But you're just going to shove it aside and forget about it. Because it does nothing. It doesn't help the, the meal, but it doesn't hurt. Seriously. Um, okay, so the book opens and there's a fight going on, but a girl's talking. So you think that the person fighting is the person who is uh, doing the talking in the uh, description uh, boxes. And it's not. It turns out that's a whole other character we're going to meet later. And instead, our hero is telling this to her father, who is in sort of a cryo chamber because he's sick, and she's sad because he looks like he's going to die alone. And for three pages, I mean, starting with a fight, actually it might be four, but for three pages, we're just told everything. Holy Toledo, what an example of tell, don't show. The, you know, come on, guys. It's really weird because in the first three pages... You could have, they could have stretched that out with panels to at least half a book. Um, <laughs> and now I, I know I'm contradicting myself because I often say, well, you know, you should let us into the world and let us get to know the world around the person, let us get to know the characters. But you kind of do that by revealing things, you know, and let us, in, let us experience all of this. No, this book can tells you right up front everything. And it is just an exposition dump. So this is a hard book to get into. Plus, she's got that stupid freaking haircut. Sorry, if you're not Tank Girl, it's time to stop with this freaking haircut. Um, but, oh my gosh. And, and here's another thing. After reading all of that text about what this world is, I went, oh wait, what's going on? Seriously, I was like, oh, I yeah, huh? I know I saw, I read it. I should know everything. Okay. Uh, then she goes, she gets caught because she's in this medical lab. She's not supposed to be. And she goes to a friend of hers and the friend talks about his friends and, and the roles they play in his little organization. Instead of showing it, it's more exposition. And that seems to be the way this book happens. They move from one setting to others and then just have an exposition dump. The book isn't bad, except for that, <laughs> if that makes any sense. This is not exactly a cringeworthy book yet, not in the first issue anyway, 
but my gosh, it definitely isn't a good one. It it could be so much better, as a matter of fact. And well, I know I could say that about any bad book, but what I mean is there's potential here. There's potential for this book to be good, but I just don't think Zoe Quinn is a comic book writer. And that's the biggest problem. I think she's got some good ideas, but she just doesn't know how to implement them. On the other hand, we have Sasquatch Detective, which I remember this being in the back of uh, Snagglepuss. And when I saw this, I was like, okay, who the hell asked for Sasquatch Detective? Was this a thing? Was this something that people were clamoring, clamoring for? Uh, are, are the comic book shops inundated with requests for Sasquatch Detective? How is this a thing? How is this on the shelves even? And, um, of course, it's a number one. So, here we go. Um, this is about a... I, I said, um, sorry. This is about a Sasquatch that wants to be a detective. I mean, this is the real thing here. Uh, it, it, and they actually give a little description. This is how I came up with Sasquatch. And that was interesting to me. I, I usually don't read the beginning things that the story before this, you know, or anything like that. But I did for this. And uh, the person said that it came out of a skit for uh, SCTV. And um, they wanted to do Charlie's Angels, but with a Sasquatch. So it's like the three, the three young ladies and a Sasquatch. And said it was a successful skit, so, okay, why not make a comic book of it? And uh, the, they tell the origin. And I found this to be as charming as hell. This is such a fun little book. I was very entertained. And, yeah, they kind of they turn into the skid, man. You're dealing with, with uh, anthropomorphic Sasquatches. Is that a thing? You're dealing with Sasquatches here, and uh, they actually scare campers away. They're very good at hide-and-go-seek. By You know, that's one of the things about them. Um, hunters are trying to get them. I thought that, you know. That's kind of cool, especially considering they're also a part of the DC Universe. As a matter of fact, Wonder Woman shows up in one of the uh, stories. Yeah, this is an anthology book as well. That's probably the downside of the book. It's 77 pages, which I think is overkill. Any one of these beginnings of the stories could have been an entire story itself, uh, you know, they could have just fleshed it out and told a, an entire story for it and just continued from there. Instead, we get the beginning uh, or, or the first issue of like uh, four or five different stories all, all in one book. And all of them say, Can, to be continued. Well, you know, with the amount of pages, you could have finished one story and moved on. But uh, yeah, that's that's about the my biggest complaint about it. The length of it. They could have just told one whole story and moved on or, or, or had, you know, a couple of full stories in it. That being said, it's a lot of fun. Like, uh, you know, the I like the character. I like the uh, main character here. She's tons of fun. The whole setup was fun. My favorite was the origin story, which is a lot of what you're seeing go by here. I just thought it was entertaining to see this family of Sasquatches uh, fool all the uh, big fun hunters. Big font, Bigfoot hunters and uh, how they steal technology <laughs> from, from the campers so they could still keep up. You know, they're well educated. They learn know how to read. They like TV, but they have to steal the technology because, you know, they're they're Bigfoots. They don't go out in front of, or big feet, Bigfoots. Um, they're Sasquatches, so they don't go out into the real world too much. The other stories are basically after she joins the police academy and she's out there doing what she does. One of another one of my favorite things is they have uh, her and her partner have a little remembrance and it plays like the opening of Charlie's Angels where you get all of these uh, scenes of these crimes that her and her partner had solved and stopped. The book Man, it's got its tongue firmly planted in its cheek, and that's the way you should approach this if you approach it. And here's the thing, 77 pages, this is not a cheap book. Uh, it really isn't. It's better than a lot of the more expensive Marvel books you've been getting recently. But I can understand a, a Sasquatch detective is a huge leap for someone, especially at this price, and that's why I think they would have done better 
with just one regular story with a cheaper price as an introductory issue. But what you do get is just a lot of fun. But that's just my opinion. <laughs> what do you think? Have you read Sasquatch Detective? Have you read uh, God Goddess God Mode? God dang it! You would think I would uh, Goddess Mode. <laughs> I told you it's a very forgettable book, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not kidding. It really is. Uh, have you read any of these? Let me know in the comments below uh, what you, what you thought of it. Also, if you like the video, you want to see more, please click like, share, get word out about the channel. Don't forget to hit subscription if you haven't done all that already, but what matters more, it is Goddess Mode. What matters more is that you ring that notification bell because YouTube doesn't really pay attention to subscriptions anymore. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, please go on over to Patreon, drop a dollar in the till, helps keep the lights on, helps keep making movies, movies, videos for you, and i like to thank everybody who's already done that, and to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very very much for watching.